Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Fourternia.com. I'm your host, AJ, and today we're doing an unboxing and a mini review of the Masterverse 2.0 Wave 11 Masters of the Universe Revolution Sorceress Tila figure. Now, this is the third time that Tila has ever appeared in Masterverse Plastic. And why I say Masterverse 2.0 is this is really a rebirth of Masterverse, a relaunch of Masterverse packaging. If you recall back in June 15th, 2021, when this line was launched, this is the way Masterverse would look. But gone are the days of the rectangular packaging. Now we have a new updated like angular cut, an angular look. And that also includes the packaging window. It's angular and smaller where this was more rectangular. And this really represents a more stylized version of what we got before, which I think is more fitting now for today's state-of-the-art, you know, toy collecting consumer. But fortunately, they have maintained a lot of things from the old to the new, and I'll get to that in a second. But in regards to the front of the packaging, we see that the 30 points of articulation are in the same spot. The Netflix logo has moved from the side to the top. They're the same size, which is cool. But the Masterverse logos have changed. Now you have this new Masterverse logo with the red bursting lava rocks that are so iconic with the Masters of the Universe franchise. But what's really, really important is there's a lot of collectors out there of Masterverse that actually like to keep the figure in packaging and just display it in the box by its profile. Back when Masterverse first launched, they came out with this like spine artwork where it's a profile of the character, and this is the way they would like to display them. Well, fortunately, with Masterverse 2.0, they've done the same thing here, where you get a profile shot of the character and also a headshot as well. So these will really, I think, fit pretty well together on the shelf so you can still maintain your collection this way. Now on the back, unfortunately, we do not have the artwork displayed. And I'll get more into that in a second. We actually have uh, toy photography, but I think we learned from Mattel at San Diego Comic-Con this year that this actually isn't toy photography. This is actually 3D rendering of the toy, but it really looks like someone, you know, took a snapshot of the figure. Now, what's really interesting here is even though there's less real estate for the artwork on this box, and I'll get into that in a second here, there's actually three pieces of artwork on the new box. We have this third piece of artwork. You know, we have the artwork on the front, we have the artwork on the spine, and then we have this third new profile shot. So it looks like the artists here are actually doing more artwork, but granted it's on less real estate. And I'll get to that in a second. So the bio here looks like it's still included on the box, but it's a lot shorter. And then of course we have the core basic wave is still on the new version of the packaging. It's just towards the bottom and smaller. Now on the side, if there were some collectors that were actually displaying their packages by name only, unfortunately you're going to lose that. You just get the artwork here. And that's what I want to get into about artwork real estate. The one thing I'm going to miss is on the original packaging, you would have this great rectangular canvas to display uh, the artist's artwork. But now that's been ported to the side and the front here where you have to have this like sort of angular look to get an idea of what the whole piece of artwork represents. And it's really not a great way to appreciate the artwork, you know? It's really hard for collectors to appreciate it or display it this way. Or even if they're like putting the box on the, on the wall afterwards, once they took the figure out of the box, you're always going to have this bend in the cardboard. So I think it's going to be even more important that Mattel shares this great Masterverse artwork, you know, on social media, on Instagram, but also in their art books. So fans one day can really appreciate this in its 2D look without having it like warped around its packaging. So that's the only thing I'm going to miss from Masterverse version one versus version two. But otherwise, I think this is a great updated look and I'm really happy that this is the way Masterverse figures are going to be coming on your retail shelves, you know, and hopefully this is going to attract a lot more consumers to the Masterverse line. So that's enough talking about the Masterverse packaging changes. Let's focus now on the packaging of Sorceress Tila. So let's talk Sorceress Tila. She's been a long time coming, the character and the figure. More the character, right? The character was originally teased, her lineage was teased way back in 1983 in the filmation series He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the episode called Tila's Quest. 
But her figure has been a long time coming, too, because if you think about it, she debuted in part two of Masters of the Universe Revelation, and that aired in November 2021. So I really expected this figure to come out over the past two years, you know, in the Revelation subline, because she was integral to the plot. She was the main character. But her figure never came out. And then finally, more than two years later, we finally get her, and it's not even in the Masterverse Revelation subline, but it's in the Revolution subline, which is really a surprise. But I guess good things come to those who wait, but I'm just really surprised that she took this long. So let's take a look at the Masterverse packaging. The artist here is Simon Eckert, and he's really done a brilliant job. I love the look of the sorceress here. Look at it. The apparition, you know, the way her eyes are just white and it's glowy. You know, it's her astral form, right? And it looks like she's standing behind Sorceress Tila, and she's empowering her. And there's Sorceress Tila, and she's got her hand... And she's casting a spell, and it's just its such a good look. And we also have terrific artwork on the spine. Here's the second piece of artwork, and we have the, the profile look, and we have the headshot. I love that they're incorporating a headshot in the profile look now. And then look her standing there with her arms on her waist, and she looks so confident and, you know, ready for any challenge that uh, she faces. And then on the back, look at that. Like I was saying before, we actually get a third piece of artwork. And here she is smiling. And I imagine, you know, this might be headcanon, but I imagine this is due to um, her finally revealing to Prince Adam how she feels about him and how he feels about her. You know, they make this revelation together and they finally realize they have feelings for each other. And I think it's going to be explored more in Masters of the Universe Revolution. At least that's my theory. Uh, so then on the back here, we have toy photography but it's really computer generated and i guess you can really tell on these side images right the lighting doesn't really look real i mean this cape is just glowing too much and the way the body is shadowed here but it's just the hands are shown you can tell it's really like computer generated and not an actual figure i don't know i i hope they do a better job with this next time but um all right so let's get to her bio her bio says sorceress tila heroic guardian of castle grayskull after years of running from her past, Tila embraces her heritage and hones her newfound magical powers as the next sorceress of Castle Grayskull. Yeah, that's a lot shorter than we're accustomed to, right? It's really truncated down, so that's a shame for anyone who likes the bios. Otherwise, I think that's it with the packaging, so let's get her out of the box and take a closer look. So here's the Sorceress Tila out of the box and in 360 degrees, and she looks fantastic. She looks, as far as I can tell, she's the spitting image of what we saw in Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2. Uh, if you take a look at the powerhouse animation model sheet, I think everything is just an exact match from the headdress and the eyes and, you know, the beak to her face, to the gemstone in the middle and the way her armor falls and like these bracers here with the blue and the gold and the bicep bracers and how these, the, this really cape, but like this featherish cape is presented with the colors and then those boots, even with the yellow on the boots, or maybe that's gold, but the gold little like uh, triangles on the tip of her boots. I mean, this is a spitting image of what we saw in Masters of the Universe Revelation. And that's what we want with this kind of figure, right? That it looks like it jumps out of the cartoon and onto our shelf. And look at the sculpting of the hair. Now there's some wash in the hair. It looks really nice. Boy, do I love this sculpt. There's really not much wash anywhere else, but I don't think it needs it. I and mean, it really didn't call for it in the animation model. And it shouldn't call for it on the figure as well. This should look as close as it can to what we saw on screen. And it really does. She looks really great. All right, so let me get her off this. And let's take a closer look at that head sculpt. So here's a closer look at the Sorceress Tila head sculpt, and she looks great. Look how well it's sculpted and painted. I love the sculpting of the headdress here. You know what? This actually looks like a separate piece glued on. Yeah, that's a separate piece glued on, but that ain't coming off. Nope. But look how well it's painted. The red eyes and the gold beak and her eyes, right? And those lips. Masterverse always does such a great job, especially with these female head sculpts. It's just great. Oh, look at that. There's her um, undershirt or feathers or whatever it is, just like the animation model um, coming out right from under her shoulder armor. So that's cool and accurate. Let's take a closer look here. 
on the side. Oh, yeah, there's her ear sticking out. And look at the sculpting of the hair. This hair is just great. This sculpt is just magnificent. It just looks like the animation model. And you have the wash inside. It's just so well done. Yeah, look at this. Mm, great head sculpt. So regarding the articulation of Sorceress Tila, you know, she's going to have the 30 points of articulation, you know, baked in already into the figure. But unfortunately, her design is going to severely hamstrung it. You know, it's going to severely restrict its effectiveness. And what I mean is you're going to get some head articulation. She's going to be able to look down a little and side to side. But this hair is really going to prevent her from looking up. It's going to push against her back. And, you know, so you're going to get... Limited head articulation. The same thing with the arms. This the shoulder armor here, there's only so far that it's just going to lift up. It's going to be prevented here. This is not flexible. This is hard plastic. And then same thing with the legs as well. Even though her dress is uh, pliable plastic, you're only going to get some <laughs> limited articulation. You're only going to be able to get the legs so far out. It's interesting. Her legs also has the drop-down hips, which is new. Well, uh, starting wave 10, right? Uh, but... She really can't utilize it, not the way Sorceress Tila is constructed. So, unfortunately, the articulation is going to be limited on this figure. Just know that going in. So, in regards to accessories, Sorceress Tila comes with her Sorceress Staff. And then she also comes with two spellcasting hands. And that's it. Otherwise, she's pretty light on accessories. Now, I want to point out with the Masterverse 2.0 packaging... Um, not all the accessories are going to be located in the plastic bubble. The sorcerer's staff was, but the hands wasn't. The hands was actually in this compartment here. It's a cardboard compartment with a door on top, and it can be easily missed. So it's, it's important to always check this compartment for accessories. Now, what helps with that is it looks like every Masterverse 2.0 figure is going to have this cool content list that shows everything that comes with the figure. So that's going to help. And here is Sorceress Tila with her spellcasting hands. And here's the Sorceress Tila with her Sorceress Staff. And it looks like it is the same sculpt as her mother's. And here are all the three Tilas available in the Masterverse line. And regarding reuse, there is some reused parts here, but it's really regarding the bottom half of the body, and it's really between Sorceress Tila and Classic Tila. Regarding the, you know, the head sculpts, the head sculpts are definitely different. The hair is different. The shoulders are different because um, Sorcerer's Tila has the cloth sculpted in. The biceps are different because they have different bicep bracers. Elbows are the same. The forearms are different because it's different forearm gauntlets. And of course, the torsos are different and the chest piece is different. But then when it comes down to the legs, I think it's the reused thighs, reused knees, reused ankles, reused boots. And they're just painted differently, you know, reused feet. So really from the legs down, they're reuse. But uh, from the, I guess, the hips up, um, it's all brand new sculpts. So what do I think of the Masterverse, Masters of the Universe Revolution Sorceress Tila? I love her. I am so excited to have her. Like I said, this, this figure was a long time coming. You know, I was a big fan of the Filmation He-Man and the Masters of the Universe series. 40 years ago as a kid and I couldn't believe her lineage that she was the daughter of the sorceress and I couldn't wait for her to take her mother's place and then here she is you know finally 40 years later she's realized in plastic form the sorceress Tila you know the new one to sit on the throne of Castle Grayskull and I couldn't be more excited about the execution I mean she really looks like she popped out of the Masters of the Universe Revelation cartoon and into this plastic form you know the colors are perfect the sculpting the you know everything they didn't really miss a detail here and she looks great i mean minor quibbles could be i wish the cape was a little bit thicker material or maybe she came with more accessories like magical effects or something like that but that's just minor i really love this figure she's really well executed much like prince adam was and i'm just so excited to have her so so that's it i want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.